Hello again, my name is John Kirk, uh, a third generation uh, participant at St Cuthbert's. This painting is an oil on canvas work by an artist, Chris Geale. He's a potter and painter based in Gromont, North Yorkshire. Chris paints with a palette knife as opposed to brushes and tends to specialise in quite large landscapes and seascapes. And I think he manages to capture the spectacle, season, majesty and mood of the countryside in his work, just as if the painting was a living thing. Much of his work depicts scenes in and around the North Yorkshire moors and coastline. This example is in fact no distance from his studio and gallery and shows a springtime scene of the murk esque flowing through Gromont Woods. Now, those of you who follow on TV the Yorkshire Steam Railway will recognise that Gromont is the location for the engine shed and workshops of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. I've been working on that railway for over 20 years now and stay in Gromont whilst I am there. So I know Chris Geel very well and uh, quite a few of his works hang on my walls and I'm probably one of his best customers. Thus far, I've managed to avoid appearing on the TV programme. As with many of Chris's paintings that I own, this view is in fact well known to me. At first blush, it appears to be a very quiet rural spot. But you're not far from the railway's workshops, where the shed staff are carrying out quite heavy engineering, welding work, running repairs on the engines, carrying out heavy overhauls on the engines, and maintaining boilers. All old school, very noisy industrial tasks. You are also not far from Grooment Station, where there may be a couple of hundred passengers coming and going. You will also hear the steam engines whistle as the train departs Grooment from Gothland, which is Aidensfield if you're a Hartley fan, or Hogsmeade if you're a Harry Potter fan. Now, it's a very steep incline up to Gothland with a ruling gradient of about 1 in 49. After the whistle, you will hear the engine take its first few breaths perhaps giving a slip before it settles into a steady beat, out of the station, through the tunnel, past the engine sheds, and then the engine will really set into the gradient. Each beat now a loud bark at the chimney as the fireman gets stuck into his or her task of feeding the hungry firebox. I have done this many times, and it's hard, skilled, but very satisfying work when things go right, of course. On a still day, you can hear the engine blasting its way up the hill for some time. But the sounds of people, of industry, of machines recedes, and nature reclaims the moment. The noise and chaos of our lives are close by, but in this place, the clamor gives way to the cathartic solace of the poetry of nature, and the chance for a moment to be still and reflect in the ever-present wonder and beauty of this world. Looking at the picture as it settles into its natural peace, perhaps you can hear birdsong. Perhaps you can feel a gentle breeze stirring the trees to murmurs amongst their branches. Perhaps you can feel a hint of warmth in the spring sun. And perhaps you can hear the murk esque whispering and singing as its waters weave and play amongst and around the rocks and stones. Here we might just find that still small voice of calm, or as the Celtic benediction speaks of, the deep peace of the running waves, the deep peace of the flowing air, the deep peace of the quiet earth. For as Christ told us, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Amen. Oh,